In this video we're going to talk a little bit about needle felting large-scale sculpture. This piece has been covered in what's called roving wool uh, using the needle felting process so I'm just going to kind of walk through how I did this. It's also a little bit of a product review video because I tested out all of the different needle stabbing devices uh, that I could find. So the basics of needle felting is that you start out with this little ball of wool and you stab it over and over again with this special needle. The needle has little barbs on the end here so as you're stabbing it the wool's getting tangled up in itself and it kind of uh, compacts in on itself to create a little bit more dense ball. So you keep adding more wool and stabbing that into the first ball and you can just start to kind of create whatever shape uh, you want. And with a lot of stabbing you can create like a really dense ball of felt and start to add details. And then with a lot of practice, you can start to make stuff like this. So I had to modify this whole process to make it work on these five foot tall sculptures. The first thing I did is look at all the different needle stabbing tools to see if there was something that was uh, faster and more efficient. So there's a variety of different types of needles you can buy. Uh, 36, 38, 40, 42. I'm not sure what they all do, but they all have specific things. Um, some of them have barbs that uh, kind of face at different angles, so when you pull them out they give you like kind of a fuzzy texture. I know that the 40 is one that is often used to finish a piece because it leaves uh, the smallest holes. Um, I use for my for all of the big sculptures, I just use the 38s. Um, it's kind of a commonly used default uh, needle for needle felting. So the first thing I did is look at all the different hand tools that held multiple needles. There's this one here that holds three. This one here that holds eight. This one here that holds 12 and this one here that holds 20. So after trying all of these the three pin was hands down my favorite. Um, I actually ended up using the three pin and occasionally the single pin uh, for all of the sculptures. Um, the main thing is that the three pin was really able to kind of move around the entire contour of the shape. Um, and really the end result is that the texture on it was uh, very uniform and organic looking. And as soon as I started to go up in size, um, I just noticed that the uh, texture that it was leaving was just not as um, uniform. Especially with the larger ones, it just wasn't creating a, a very consistent pattern. Um, it helps I think to go into the surface at a perpendicular angle. Uh, so with that many pins when you're dealing with kind of um, an organic shape with curves it's just hard to put that uh, theory into practice. Then there's this thing called the Addy Quick. It's got a motor, it's got an on off switch, it's got one single needle, found that this works great on smaller pieces, um, especially if you have detail. Sculpting this little spiral pattern in here uh, with this tool goes very fast. Um, I didn't end up using this tool though because I didn't really have uh, any fine detail in my work. Then there's this thing here called Simplicity. It's got a little on off switch uh, and basically when you push this down it's got a system of eight needles uh, that, goes, that goes back and forth kind of like a, a sewing machine. This did not work at all for me and I think it's more specifically designed for this process called applique where you are felting uh, flat objects on a flat piece of felt. Um, 
but whenever you're dealing with an object that has kind of uh, curves, it just uh, does not work, but it looks cool. So I'm using New Zealand Corridale wool. Corridale is the name of the sheep. Uh, after the sheep are shorn, the wool is washed, then dried, then dyed. So there's a lot of US vendors you could find on the internet and on Etsy. Uh, this is my favorite one right here, wisteria.com. Super nice lady, always helped me to find what I needed. Most of the US vendors sell uh, small packages of wool, like this size or this size. And I think that's just because most of the people are, are working on a much smaller scale. I was always ordering in bulk um, these two pound bundles here. The US vendors never really had this size in stock. Uh, they always had to special order it from their European people. Uh, so it did take a little bit of time to get that. So the wool also comes in different gauges, anywhere from a 27 up to a 32. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that all works, um, but this here is a 27 gauge. Uh, this is a 30 gauge. Um, I think it has to do with uh, the coarseness and also how the wool is combed. If you spread this wool apart, um, you'll see that it's kind of goes in a crosshatch. Uh, it's combed in different directions. Um, this is definitely a lot more silky. This is a 30 gauge. Um, when you spread it apart, you can see that it's all combed in one direction. For me, I, I like the 30 to the 32 gauge a lot better and it really just boils down to what the final uh, texture looked like. This silkier one uh, left a texture that was a little bit more uh, wispy and you could kind of see the direction, the, the cord of the felt in the final texture. And I think the thinner felts are better for uh, like knitting, knitting scarves, and the heavier ones are better for needle felting. So now onto the sculpture. This piece was carved out of a piece of blue EPS foam. This video is actually part four in a series where I talk about how I made this piece. So if you're interested in learning about the foam or how it got to be this big, uh, you can check out parts one through three started by pulling a strand off the bundle and then I pulled a bunch of little strands off of that strand. Then I kind of pulled everything apart a little bit more and squished it into this cotton ball shape. Then I put it down on the foam and I stabbed it in a few key spots just to secure it. Then I stabbed it a bunch of times in a consistent and even pattern until it had the same texture that all of the felt around it had. If you aren't super methodical and consistent with the way that you uh, lay down the wool and stab it into the felt, uh, you could get a very uneven texture. So regardless of what system you come up with, I think the important thing is just to really remain consistent. This process of pulling it apart in a bunch of different directions and then bunching it up into a little cotton ball shape really prevents it from looking uh, cordy and strandy. If you lay the felt down without doing this, you can really see the direction of the fibers. That was something I definitely didn't want, so I really tried to bunch it up into little balls where the strands were not all going in one direction. So another thing I would do is leave the edges a little bit unstabbed, um, so it's a little bit frayed or a little bit fuzzy. This just helps the new piece blend into the pieces that are already there. And then I think one of the most important things is to stab the new piece into the foam in a uniform pattern. And what I mean by this is don't just focus on one spot and then move to the next spot and then move to the next spot. Um, kind of bring the entire ball of felt down at the same level.
So you can see here that there is a little bit of a circular pattern from the uh, cotton ball shape, but it, it kind of blends in and it's a uniform pattern, so it doesn't really bother me. I actually like how it looks. So I put a second layer of felt on uh, because after the first layer you can still see some of the blue foam here. The second layer will hide all of this and just bulk everything up um, and I think it just looks a lot better. It's kind of like putting two coats of paint on. And you can see the edges here of the second layer that I've started. The first layer can be a little bit looser and I don't need to obsess about making it look perfect because it will be covered up by the second layer. So the second layer can actually take uh, twice as long as the first just because um, I am being a lot more meticulous. And you can also see on this layer that the edges are a lot fluffier just to help out with the blending. So here's just one more walkthrough on the final layer. Pull a bunch of little pieces off the main cord. Pull all of those pieces apart in different directions. And squish it up into a cotton ball slash hamburger patty shape. Put the piece down on the sculpture, making sure to overlap the edges from the previous pieces. And in a uniform pattern, stab the felt into the piece, making sure to leave the edges uh, of the new felt unstabbed. Here's a little time lapse of one of the polka dots. Each one of these dots took me about 30 minutes to make. I probably put about 100 total hours uh, of felting for the entire piece. And used about two and a half pounds of felt on the five foot piece. One last thing to show here. On the edges around the face and the antlers, I did use the single needle. Sometimes with a little needle you could just get into those hard to reach spots or those tight little corners. And that is the end of the final video in this series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did I would greatly appreciate it if you liked it or shared it or even left a comment below. All of that stuff helps YouTube's algorithm uh, share it to a wider public. So thanks again, and I will see you next time. Don't